Hello, and welcome to this video on the Miller-Urey experiments. These were experiments in the early 1950s to explain the origins of life with samples retained until today. It is a simplified chemical reaction that will produce the building blocks of life, a combination of heat, chemicals, and time, just like the Jeremy England video explains. This experiment begins with a mixture of water, methane, ammonia, and dihydrogen. These are all theoretically early Earth molecules that were in existence in reasonably high concentrations and as a result could foreseeably interact. This is in a flask and it is mixed with water until it comes into contact with the chemical cocktail in the mixing container. This created a volatile and excited chemistry which is further excited by the addition of extreme energy in the form of electrical sparks and in later experiments, plasma. This was then separated by cooling. This cool point condensed the water vapor back into a liquid and separated the products of the reaction. After several days, this was then taken away. The reason for the delay is to allow for any complex and time-consuming reactions that may yet occur to happen. Further variations on this experiment have been made as a result of the instability, the unreliability, and further evidence that has occurred in relation to its design. These include an unpolished experiment using a tapered glass aspirator. This drastically increased the amount of airflow through the entire contraption. This increased airflow created a particularly streamlined reaction. This streamlined reaction meant that the vapor-rich compounds were moved through and into the cooling apparatus that much sooner, thereby stopping any chemical reactions there and then which limited the amount of future chemical interaction and therefore the development of more complex compounds. This created a complex series of alternative experiments that were never explored to the full extent possible. In 2007, Miller died, and new vials that have not been opened were found. Scientists were examining these sealed vials. The key here is the discovery of well over 20 different amino acids. The key to this is that Miller only found 5 the first time. This eventually became 14 amino acids and 5 amines. The total tally using modern identification and detection techniques found 22 amino acids in the 55 year old vials, but only 20 amino acids occur normally, meaning there are at least 2 in there that are completely synthetic. As was mentioned earlier, the experimental design was modified over time. And this is because some evidence suggests that Earth's original atmosphere had less of the used compounds, in this case methane in particular, and instead had a higher amount of things like carbon dioxide. And that this meant that the Miller-Urey experiment, as it was designed, was fundamentally flawed. But that new evidence has now come into existence that their design may not have been as flawed due to abundant evidence of major volcanic eruptions. These would have released, among other things, carbon dioxide, nitrogen in the form of dinitrogen, hydrogen sulfides, and sulfur dioxides. Using these particular compounds, and comparing these results with those found in the Miller-Urey experiment, have created more or less the same results fundamentally, and then the new modified version has created even more diverse molecules. Greater diversity means that even more synthetics have come into existence. This only further proves the point that although only so many compounds exist now, that the possibilities when it first began, millions of years ago for life, were significantly greater. Another French experiment since then has offered a new explanation, and that is linked below if you're curious. These could be the building blocks of more complex protein structures, as was established with the discovery of DNA. It was thought protein dictated life is something as small and simple as DNA could not possibly cause the control needed, but protein was capable of adequately complex interactions. We now understand that it is possible to build protein. Protein can then act as a means of catalyzing DNA, and the DNA then acts as a super controller for protein production and synthesis. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you may have below.